In this video, I would like to take you be behind the scenes of the STN database to think about some of the big problems that we've had to face in developing the database and the tools for interrogating it. So far, we've treated the database as if it is, in effect, an accumulation of the complete data on all sales by the STN, and as if data on places, towns, transactions, books, is all more or less unproblematic. The truth, however, is that the STN database really layers layer upon layer of uncertainty, and we have to have tools and ways of dealing with that if we are to come up with historically accurate assessments of what our data means. Fortunately, in the course of building this database, we have been able to develop powerful new tools with which to do this as a result of the contributions of the, data, of the database team. Let me illustrate this point by taking you to one of the visualizations we have already looked at. This is the calendar, day by day, of the sales and uh, purchases of the STN. Every box on this calendar is a particular day, and any box that has a coloured mark in it is recording an event that is taken from the sources up here. Green for the day books, blue for the stock books, yellow for letters, and so on and so forth. We can see that in some cases on a single day, we have drawn transactions from two or even more different sources, and that at various periods, business is being done by the STN almost every single day in terms of sales and purchases. A closer look at the diagram, of course, shows us that we actually have drawn our material from a large range of different sources used by the STN for very different purposes. And the data that can be drawn and found in those sources varies quite considerably. The day books are our most reliable source of data, our most complete, usually giving us several points on the journey that a book was about to take or had just taken in order to reach a client or to arrive from some distant point. The stock books provide rather less data in terms of a book's journey, but still, in theory, give us a day-to-day -day running, running inventory of the stocks of the STN and where books went to and came from. By the time we reach order books and letters, we have some more problems. There are gaps in the data. Not every small client, for example, would be recorded in the order books, so we don't get counter sales, which can only be found if we have alternative sources for a given period where we're reliant on the order books. And letters are even more problematic at giving us data as solid as we would like, because we have only recorded what we have called solid accounting data for our purposes. Data that verifies beyond reasonable doubt that the books that a bookseller may have ordered, the STN may have sent, had actually changed hands, because in many cases the STN were unable to fulfil particular orders, and in other cases they chose not to, if a client was a bad debtor, for example. As a result, we have actually got here a patchwork of information drawn from sources of varying comprehensivity and possibly varying reliability, with possibilities at various points of gaps in our data. Therefore, if we wish to make comparisons over time, we have something of a problem, or to make sweeping generalisations. How are we to deal with that problem? Well, for most practical purposes, for most users of the database, it seems to us probable 
that they will accept that there are small gaps in a very comprehensive data set and be able to get on with their business unless of course they're interested in the great year of the French Revolution in 1789 where we have no data coming from our data sources at all because we have no data sources. Um, how then could we confront that? The answer that I came up with was to create a menu whereby users might be able to restrict their searches to data drawn from a particular source, even though that would mean losing data for periods where that source had not been available. And so for that reason, we created the first of our option menus, the data source menu. Therefore, should I wish to compare like with like over time, I have the option using this menu of choosing not to use certain sources that are partial or not entirely reliable, derived data, Durand sales tour, and letters for example, might be missed out when I do a search of a particular date. Unticking them and then updating my preferences, I'm able to see that my future searches will bring me um, a smaller data set than I might otherwise have. So if I search all book sales to and from everywhere, I will now be searching a smaller number of books. And we can look, compare it to the original somewhat over 400,000 books that we have in the database and see whether those numbers have changed substantially. When we look at the total books, in fact, they have. Um, effectively around 28,000 books sold were sold through, uh, recorded in sources other than those that I have left checked on that option menu. And I can search this subset for searches which have a greater degree of source data integrity as a result. A second major problem for us in interpreting our data is shown very clearly in the table that we have here. At the top of this table of best-selling works are a whole series of works that are associated with the STN, their own editions, as in this case, Planta Gagnon Sa Vie en On It On. Uh, the first edition here we know to be a commissioned STN edition, the second one we very much suspect to be so, and indeed claims to be an STN edition, as you can see. As a result, we have to question whether any best-selling information we get is a deliberate choice of the STN in terms of its own publishing strategies, or possibly worse. Could it be that men like Rie de Saussure are actually commissioning a large number of these books and that it actually represents the commissioned tastes of particular clients. This might be demonstrated particularly by this next map. I've mapped the keyword American Revolution by sales destination and appear to have learned that it was at Paris and Versailles that most readers of the works on the American Revolution were based, a discovery which may well enhance historical interpretations that the French Revolution was a sister revolution to the American one. We might wish to follow up on that realisation, however, by looking a bit more carefully at the keyword American Revolution to see what books were involved, and that's something that I'm going to do now. If we do that, we will find that a couple of books very strongly indicate their sales at the top of the list connect to the American Revolution, and at least some of them we will find such as this one, are 
commissioned STN editions, uh, in this case to Jacques-Pierre Brissot de Warville, who was based, as we know, um, in Paris. The result is, therefore, that it is the Vanity Press publications, or at least commissioned publications of particular authors, may be convinced that they have a ready market for them, who happen to be based in Paris, that are giving us this particular result. So we have a problem here of both commissioned editions being overrepresented and going generally to one or relatively few places in large numbers. And we have an added problem that the STN's own editions are overrepresented as they definitionally sold every copy of their own works and far less of those of other houses whose works they tended to trade in. How are we to deal with this problem? The answer is, of course, another option menu, this time the edition type menu, which categorises various sorts of work that we can exclude or include at our will. STN editions, pure and simple, STN commissioned editions, where there is another client, and livre en société, joint editions of the STN and another publisher, head the list of works that in these cases we might wish to exclude. But equally we might be interested specifically in the STN's trade and wish to interrogate um, one or other of those things. Let us just repeat that American Revolution check by taking out merely the commissioned editions and see what happens then? So here we look for American Revolution. I even have a menu box at the top to remind me I've got some options on that has just appeared. We now go and we get a map which I imagine will look somewhat different from the one we saw the first time around. Still Paris very much in the lead, but the numbers look as if they are considerably smaller. Paris no longer, in fact, the leading market for such works once we have removed the commissioned editions, and that opens the question of whether we should revisit particular interpretation. And because our menu of commissioned editions under the edition type is potentially rather crude, excluding all works of a commissioned edition, even where the STN sold some copies for themselves, it is also possible to use our client type menu to exclude commissioning clients, which might give a different result, as it would exclude all books bought by Brissot, for example. Such a menu allows us to deal with other potential glitches to separate wholesale clients from other book trade clients, to include or exclude counter sales, which we only have for certain periods. Um, and to interrogate clients who, at least according to the STN documentation, are outside the book trade rather than within it. So a powerful range of options 